Hi, I'm Dennis Fisher. I'm a security evangelist with Kaspersky Labs America's office in Boston. And I'm here with Andre Nikishin and Hi, Vladimir Zepolensky, two of my colleagues. We're here today. We're going to talk about whitelisting, uh, which is one of the newer uh, security protection technologies that we're talking about. Um, so, guys, let's start out. Vladimir, tell me a little bit about whitelisting, what it is, and maybe why we need it. It's very simple to explain what, like, what whitelisting is. So, everyone knows blacklisting. Right. How it works? It's uh, the black files which are not allowed to be executed on a user's PC. They're just blocked, mm -hmm. so it's not allowed for files for execution. So whitelisting works uh, works the same way, just vice versa. So only trusted files that are trusted by antivirus company are allowed for execution on user's PC. Okay, so if 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 that's how whitelisting works, and we're going to end up with sort of a pretty large database of whitelisted files, right? I mean, how, how sure. do you get that list of files to the endpoint, to the end user? Do yes. we just send it to them? Okay, you know, uh, there are more than 100 million clean files in our whitelisting database. You know, it's a huge number. You know, uh, we got a lot of sources how to get uh, this clean file to our lab. First of all, we have a partnership with a number of uh, software vendors, uh, almost all uh, famous and big software vendors are our partners. And we have a special crawlers to crawl the internet and to check this file and other stuff. Okay, so if, if one of our partners uh, produces a new mm -hmm. software file, they'll be able to, to upload it to our, to our cloud uh, database so that so that we can check it and make sure that it's safe? Uh, absolutely. So one way, uh, our partner will upload a new file to us before release, and we will know everything about this file beforehand. Mm. Or we can uh, go you know, by timer from time to time to the FTP site of the partner or HTTP site of the partner and download it uh, by, our, by ourselves. And again, uh, before release, we will be able to know uh, anything uh, or everything about this particular file. And uh, this knowledge will prevent our customers from you know, false positive, pro probably, or uh, uh, will allow to better detection or better protection. Yes, you're quite right. Actually, the reason why we have uh, started this whitelisting is, uh, is also very simple. So they create two lot of malware. For example, in 2007, we had 3 million unique files in our labs, repository. You mean black one, yeah? Yes, yeah. yes. Malicious. Black, black Malicious, files. yeah. Yes. In 2008, we've got 17 million <laughs> black files. You know, five times more? Yeah, yes. Almost six. Okay. Back, almost in six, 2009, yeah. we already had 34 million black files. Wow. Again, two times more? Yes. Yes, imagine so it's it's real, it's incredible growth. So what should we expect within the next few or several years? So it's it's really impact for antivirus vendor because it becomes more complicated to distinguish the legal files and the malware files right. because also the malware becomes more complicated. And it brings the challenges not only to antivirus industry mm -hmm. but also to software vendors and distributors. Mm -hmm. So what are the, Andre, what are the chances that um, a, a malicious file could get through to the whitelist? You know, so it was sort of a, a false negative, if you False will. negative. So, yeah. you know, uh, I can uh, imagine that, I can think that the uh, probability of such events is very, very low. Uh, because uh, despite of the, our downloading from trusted source, anyway, we check uh, these, uh, every file we downloaded from trusted source by our, uh, by our external, you know, antivirus external tool, and especially internal use-only mm -hmm. tool to be sure that this particular file definitely clean. Because, you know, we had, uh, we had uh, knowledge, we had stories uh, that some files from well-known vendors were infected. Yeah. That's, that sometimes it happens. Yes. So, and because of that, we already double-check all every file we downloaded to our database. Because it seems to me that that false negative is almost uh, in some ways worse than a false positive because definitely. you know you're telling our users this file is definitely safe. Yes, yeah, sure, so definitely. So avoid that as, yeah. as much as possible. Yeah, 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 you're right. Okay, so yeah. we obviously have a lot of partners that are already involved with this. We're getting software from them. How do, can other partners get involved? How do people get involved with the whitelisting program? Uh, you know, that's very easy. We have a special whitelisting partner program 
and every software vendor could uh, participate in this program. So we, on our uh, websites, we have a special you know, page to that, okay. and it's very easy to fill in the form, and uh, as soon as possible, within hours, uh, our colleagues will answer, and uh, after uh, signing the agreement, we have to automatically up add uh, the source to our uh, database, and we will receive the, all of the files of this particular software vendor into our database. Okay, and so each time they produce a new version of their software or, or new yeah. new file, they can yeah, just absolutely. Add it. So, and uh, the best way to communicate with us to send us files before release. So, uh, in this case, all our uh, customers would be protected beforehand and right. uh, we eliminate all false positive, possible false positive in this case. Right, okay. So, Vladimir, how, um, how do you see this fitting in with the traditional way that antivirus works, you know, the, the traditional blacklisting? Is, this, mm -hmm. is, is whitelisting going to be the future exclusively or are they both going to work together? Of course, if we imagine, so let's say the black future, the worst mm -hmm. future, there will be a day when they will produce more malware than a clean legal software. Right. Yeah, I should say that nowadays we are very close to this border actually. Yes. So uh, you mentioned a huge number of uh, black yes. files nowadays yes. in our database. And uh, white files, it's uh, something similar. Not the same, of course, white files nowadays is more than the black files. But nevertheless, the uh, you know, amount is very similar. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So in this case, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, you can always isolate your network or your computer and allow only whitelisted software for execution. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have this whitelisting integrated by default in our products. Okay. So, but I think that the approach, the security approach, should be more, you know, uh, more wide because we have to expect the, the, the malware, we have to expect the, the, the different behavior of malware. So, I think that Whitelisting, of course, it's good and it's very prospective in future. That also another technologies are as a blacklisting, as a, uh, so uh, detection by behavior. Right. Some of, proactive protection. Yes, yeah? pro yeah. proactive protection should be also alive and should be also treated as uh, uh, you know unique approach. It yes. Should be complemented. Okay. By oh each yeah, other. it's gonna be like you know multi-level protection. Of course. So and whitelisting is just one of the levels of protection. So it's not a silver bullet, you know. There is no silver bullet in, right. in protection, yeah. So they'll all be complimentary. We'll have absolutely, you know, white absolutely listing, right. blacklist, yeah. and heuristics, and behavior-based. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, from a uh, customer's point of view, to activate the whitelisting uh, functional in the product, a uh, customer uh, has to participate in our cloud security network, or KSN, mm -hmm. and check the checkbox in this case also some extra uh, extra functional uh, cloud functional cloud protection would be uh, enabled so and uh, customer would be you know better have a better protection so cloud technology it's it's a key of a whitelisting by the way okay yes you're right because the the uh, uh, whitelisting should is uh, the, the message for whitelisting is uh, cloud technology because you imagine the the number of whitelisted files. So even today, as Andre has already mentioned, we have more than 100 million unique files in our repository, yeah. and it's impossible to distribute this knowledge right. among yeah. our users. Yeah, you know, just crowd. imagine the yes. size of the database the we have to distribute. Yeah, yeah, it's pff, so that numbers. means that yeah. the, there should be some technology that allows you online and very quickly to check each file's reputation. So that's why is uh, it should be cloud technology. All right, well, guys, thank you very much for uh, joining me today, and thank you all for joining us as well. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you.